We are fucked. Oh, what a finish! Beautiful goal. Hello and welcome to this season's first episode of BG TV. I'm Carlo and today we're going to talk about just how fucked Manchester United truly are this season. Now, there's no doubt that most Manchester United fans, just like myself, going into the summer, we had reason to be optimistic. We signed Fred pretty early on, and all the signs were there that we were going to have a really good summer. Diogo Dallo came in, and it looked like we were going to be pretty productive in the window. Um, and then, of course, came a complete you know, failure to bring anyone else in. I was doing a depth chart. I was sitting at work doing a depth chart, and I was just doing this thing and realizing that Guys, we're fucked. We're fucked. I'm finna have a fucking Arsenal fan TV meltdown. That, yeah, lads. Like, we're fucked, lads. If we think, if anyone out there seriously thinks that Manchester United are going to mount a title challenge with that starting 11 and what's beneath it, you're fucking having a laugh. You're having a laugh. We do not have the squad depth. We don't have the quality in individual positions. We're so much weaker than Chelsea. We're so much weaker than Man City, just in terms of, first of all, the quality in our starting eleven. Um, I would say, you know, this this can be different. Maybe if we had seen the best of Alexis Sanchez, but Sanchez since coming in, you know, I bet Pep is so fucking happy that Sanchez didn't come to City. And mind you, I think with Pep's ability to actually improve players, unlike Jose, uh, I think Sanchez would have done way better for City than he's done for United. But at United gets bombarded by tactical over-instruction from Mourinho, has no creative freedom. He's playing a team who go 1-0 up against Leicester City at home, first game of the Premier League. And what do you like to do? What do we do? We sit back, invite pressure, no, pre no pressure in the final third. We cut passing lanes and we're looking to absorb pressure, 11 men behind the ball. This is fucking Manchester United. At home, the first game of the Premier League season and you allow Leicester City to come and dominate possession. And, you know, Leicester City, and to their credit, really actually could have got a draw out that game. United played well. But is that how the standard has dropped? Has the standard really dropped that much? That a 2-1 win at Leicester, we consider playing well? Yeah, Pogba was good. Um, probably one of his better performances in a Manchester United shirt, let's be real. And I think he benefited from Fred playing in there. Against stronger opposition, who are, are going to be do more dominant in midfield, I don't know if we can get away with playing Pereira as a number six against teams who have more of a threat right through the middle of the pitch. I feel like Matic, his tactical awareness and defensive capabilities are going to be much better for us there. The midfield, Our midfield is the one area where I feel like, yeah, we can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe and win the midfield battle against most sides in the Premier League. Uh, Europe, that's another story altogether. But up front, you know, I, I'm... I'm a pretty big fan of Lukaku. I really am a Lukaku fan. I think that given the right service and uh, if, if the team is structured to play to his strengths, he can be a really effective striker. And I think his, you know, he came in for a lot of stick last season, obviously had a, a pretty significant goal job. But I think that he can be really effective. Um, if the ball, if balls are played in over the top, he's really good running through behind the center backs. And um, his hold-up play is decent. Obviously, his first touch is not the greatest. You know, he has uh, he has a bit got a bit of a heavy touch on him, so he's not the greatest at holding the ball up and linking other players in and bringing other players into the game. Um, he has moments where he shows that ability, but it's not consistent. Where you might say, yeah, he's definitely a good hold up player. Lukaku's great when he's running in behind and uh, when he's not receiving the ball to feet, when he's getting on the ends of crosses, or when he's running in uh, to balls played over the top. And I'm not saying we should go Route 1, but I'm saying Fred or Pogba looking for that ball, or even the fullbacks. Um, but of course, with Young, we know that a quick ball is never going to come in because he's going to try to take on the winger and they cut inside and he's right for it. Uh, Valencia isn't going to get the crossing because he's not going to get past the first man. You know, I think Valencia probably 30 to 40% of the time, I'd be interested to see what the stats are, but he probably gets past his man when he's in the opposing half. Uh, and, the, and the attacking third, he probably gets past his man and gets a cross into the box maybe three times out of ten, um, if, if, if that much. So we just don't have the quality to compete. If you look at what Chelsea have got, 
in the, in the other areas of the pitch. Midfield, yeah, okay, cool. With with all those players with foot. But what's beneath that? Fellaini, Herrera, McTominay, and Pereira. Now, that's decent. But I think at best, our squad right now is the third, maybe fourth best squad in the Premier League. I know that Tottenham didn't add to their squad, but Tottenham have got a pretty good squad. I really thought that Willian might have come in for Martial, although I'm kind of relieved that didn't happen. I think the board kind of stood in Jose's way there because I don't think Jose really would have had a problem with Martial leaving. But I think clearly for the board, looking at, you know, Kevin De Bruyne, looking at Mohamed Salah, people who Mourinho earlier on in their careers had the chance to work with and moved them on and decided that they weren't good enough for him and have since gone on to become, you know, two of the best, if not the two best players in the Premier League right now. Um, but yeah, you know, this video is not just, this post is not just about Manchester United's failure in the transfer window. Um, because it was a failure, by all accounts, it was a massive failure. Um, firstly, looking at the players that the club was looking to bring in, obviously after bringing in Fred, solidifying that midfield up, bringing another option in, enabling Jose hopefully to play Pogba on the left side of a midfield three, as we saw him play during the World Cup for France, very effectively so. Last season, I think we found out pretty well that Paul Pogba can simply not play the role of a pivot and a 4-2-3-1 the way Jose Mourinho wants him to. He doesn't have the defensive awareness and it also inhibits him. It limits his attacking potential, which is absolutely massive. And we saw that in the World Cup where you had Kante or Nzanze coming off the bench in the final when Kante was struggling. But you had Kante and then you had Matuidi and Pogba to the left of a midfield three. And Matuidi's energy and athleticism and defensive awareness combined with Kante obviously being one of the best ball play, one of the best ball winning midfielders in the world, if not the very best. Um, Paul Pogba didn't really have to worry too much about his defensive responsibilities, even though France were very compact defensively, you know, they were very well organized. Um, Pogba wasn't expected to do that much and he was, his focus was much more on his offensive capabilities and what he brought to the team going forward. Bringing in Fred, the whole idea with Fred is also, he's more of an, uh, you know, he's a defensive midfield player primarily. He's a ball winner. He plays the ball out from the back. As I've seen a lot of him playing for Shakhtar. You know, he really, you know, links between defense and attack very well. He's a very good player in transition. And uh, he's a fantastic ball winner, fantastic athleticism. So no doubt that whoever plays that number six role at the base of the midfield, be it Matic, you would imagine that the first choice starting eleven would look something like this, where you would have obviously David De Gea in goal, right back, I'm afraid, still Antonio Valencia. I know a lot of Manchester United fans out there are very big Valencia fans. I'm not one of them. Uh, I think he's a solid player. He's uh, uh, maybe a solid six and a half out of ten every week, maybe less than that. One of my big frustrations with Valencia has always been his propensity to give the ball away in possession and his predictability in possession. Um, and that's something that has not improved. I've always felt he's incredibly predictable. And, you know, even though he has been a pretty decent right back over the years, certainly a better right back for Manchester United than he has been a right winger. Clearly United, if they are looking to compete, you look at what the other top teams around Europe have in that position, just even in the Premier League. You know, we, we're trying to be one of the top teams in the Premier League again. And when I say top teams, I don't just mean in terms of league position. I mean in terms of the football we play. And I know last season, you know, it's, it's, it's ironic, isn't it? Because Jose Mourinho, in his first season, we finished fifth. And he was like, no, well, league position doesn't matter. If you finish fifth, you, you're the first of the losers. So it doesn't matter. Last season, all of a sudden, now finishing second matters. Now he's on about how... You know, people are treating Liverpool like serial winners and forgetting that we finished above them. But hang on, 12 months ago, you were saying that it didn't matter. If you don't finish first, basically, you know, Talladega Knights, Ricky Bobby style, if you ain't first, you're last. That was your rhetoric. And now you've changed it. I mean, it doesn't really make much sense, does it? But anyway, back to the first story starting 11. You would imagine it would look something like this. Valencia, Lindelof, Baye, who, by the way, had, both of them had a great game against Leicester. Uh, quite just why Manchester United centre-backs were two of the, the most uh, impressive players in a home game 
in the first game of the season against Leicester City. That's a whole other question, but we're not going to get into that philosophical debate in this video. We're going to talk just basically about why United are fucked. Left back, Luke Shaw. Damian looks like he could be on his way out, so obviously we can't count Damian as an option. Uh, somehow, Fosu Mentz has been let go on loan again. I thought that he would get the chance to come in and show what he can do. Uh, unfortunately not. So... That's probably looking at our strongest back four is Valencia, Bahi, Lindelof, Shaw. Underneath that, you got Jones and Smalling, two players who, look, initially I was a very big Phil Jones fan when he arrived, but he just hasn't blossomed into the player that we expected him to be. He's a decent player. I don't think he's a Manchester United player. And, uh, you know, as long as Chris Smalling and Phil Jones don't start for us, I think we have a decent chance of at least, you know, building a decent back four. Jones and Smalling to me, along with Ashley Young, who might be the first choice over Luke Shaw at their left back position. All of those four players, for me, need to move on. Um, you know, Smalling and Jones have been, in my opinion, proven to not be Manchester United quality. And um, Valencia, you know, Jose named him captain of the team. Another one of the problematic things, and we'll get to that in a second, that Jose has done. Named Valencia captain, uh, one of five captains, potential captains. And then all of a sudden has a go at him for coming back overweight. Um, but yeah, anyway. So that's the back four. The midfield three you would imagine would be probably Matic, Fred, Pogba. Now that's pretty decent midfield. Up front you would have uh, Alexis Sanchez, more than likely on the left. Lukaku up front. And on the right hand side you've got any combination. Or any any you know combination of the, of the three players on that right hand side who can play there. Namely, Juan Mata, Marcus Rashford, who I don't think should be playing the right-hand side at all. Uh, Jesse Lingard can also play there. And Martial, we also saw, saw play there on occasion. Now, I think that in the case of Rashford and Martial, both of them are sabotaged by playing on the right-hand side. They're not effective in that position. They don't get balls into the box. They don't take the, the defender to the byline and stand him up. Um, they invariably come inside and they look for goal scoring opportunities. And both of them are a lot more effective, in my opinion, coming in off that left hand side, beating one or two men, and then you have the goal to aim at the full spectrum and you can bend it in. You know, Martial loves doing that on Star. Um, so I don't think either of them really want to be stuck out on that right hand side. Lingard can do a job there, no doubt. Mata can also do a job there and can be effective. But again, on his left side, playing on the right hand side, he's going to want to cut in. When you already have Sanchez doing that on the left constantly, it doesn't really leave much room for another player coming in. Um, and I would prefer if we actually had gone out and got an out and out right winger who could have come in and provided the service that Lukaku desperately needs up front. Oh, what a finish! 